totally colorful trip to see how crayons like me are made. Yeah, let's go! But don't forget your shades, because where I come from, the colors are out of sight. Ever wondered how those bright, colorful crayons are made? Join us as we explore each fascinating step in their creation, from melting wax and blending in pigments to molding the final product. The origin of crayons. The crayon, a beloved tool from our childhood, has been a source of inspiration and creativity for over a hundred years. These vibrant sticks have sparked countless imaginations and created lasting memories. The story behind crayons and their production is as fascinating as the art they help create. The term crayon has an intriguing history. It originates from the French word for chalk pencil, which itself comes from the 16th century French term cray chalk and the Latin word creta, earth. Over time, the French meaning shifted to simply pencil. The concept of blending wax with colorants dates back millennia. Ancient encaustic painting involved mixing hot beeswax with pigments to adhere colors to surfaces like stone. This technique, used by the Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, and various indigenous groups, was effective for art, but not suited for the crayons we know today. Encaustic painting's method of burning in the colors made it impractical for everyday use in schools and children's crafts. However, the modern crayon as we know it only emerged in the late 19th century. The pivotal moment came in 1903 when Edwin Binney and C. Harold Smith launched the first box of Crayola crayons, revolutionizing the world of art and creativity. Before this breakthrough, Binney and Smith were established figures in the coloring market, known for products like Lamp Black, a black pigment made from burned whale oil, and chalk from their factory in Peekskill, New York. In 1902, they introduced the Stainel Marking Crayon, setting the stage for their next innovation. The following year, Edwin Binney's wife, Alice, coined the name Crayola by merging the French word for chalk, cray, with oleaginous, a term meaning oily, reflecting the paraffin wax used in the crayons. Binney and Smith began selling Crayola crayons in various box sizes and colors, and also launched the Rubens Crayola line aimed at artists to rival the European Raphael crayons. These seemingly simple tools are not just for coloring. They are vital in developing fine motor skills as children grip and maneuver them. Beyond their practical use, crayons evoke strong memories and emotions through their distinctive sight, smell, and texture. Raw materials used in crayon production. At the heart of every crayon is paraffin wax, a byproduct of petroleum. This material is ideal for crayon production because it melts at a relatively low temperature and solidifies quickly, making it perfect for efficient mass production. However, wax alone isn't enough to create a crayon. The true magic lies in the pigments, which are the color-producing substances that can be derived from natural or synthetic sources. These pigments are mixed with molten paraffin wax, and it is this blend that forms the crayon. Each hue in a crayon box is the result of a unique pigment formula, meticulously developed to achieve the perfect shade. Additives also play a crucial role in the crayon-making process. Hardening agents help the crayons retain their shape and prevent them from breaking easily, while fillers are used to adjust the texture and opacity of the final product. The manufacturing process of crayons. In large vats, solid blocks of paraffin wax are heated until they melt into a clear, thick liquid. Maintaining the right temperature is crucial. If the wax gets too hot, it can burn, and if it cools down too much, it becomes impossible to mix. Once the wax reaches the perfect temperature, carefully measured pigments are added, creating the desired colors. This colored wax mixture is then poured into crayon-shaped molds through molding machines. When the cooling process is complete, the molds open, releasing fully formed crayons ready for the final steps. At the end of the cooling line, rows of freshly molded crayons, vibrant in color, pop out from the stainless steel molds. These naked crayons then move to the labeling station, where machines wrap each one in its signature paper label. These colorful wrappers, featuring the crayon's name and brand information, not only enhance their visual appeal, but also mark the end of the intricate manufacturing process. The sight of neatly labeled crayons lined up in a box is the final touch in this delicate production. Throughout the production process, strict quality control measures are in place to ensure every crayon meets high standards. Durability tests are also performed, subjecting sample crayons to various stresses to ensure they can withstand regular use. Safety is a top priority, with rigorous testing ensuring that every crayon is non-toxic and safe for children. Environmental responsibility is also a key consideration in crayon manufacturing, 
Eco-friendly practices are prioritized, including the use of recycled packaging materials and strategies to minimize waste during production. The foundation of every crayon is paraffin wax, a petroleum-derived substance that is essential for the smooth application and easy melting characteristics of crayons. In its raw form, paraffin appears as large, white blocks that are odorless and tasteless, awaiting transformation through the infusion of color. Paraffin is chosen for its distinctive properties. Its low melting point makes it ideal for large-scale production, allowing it to be easily worked with and rapidly solidified. This quick solidification process supports efficient manufacturing, while paraffin's stability ensures that crayons retain their shape both on store shelves and in the hands of users, whether young or old. Another crucial component in crayon production is a range of additives that enhance the crayon's performance and durability. Steric acid, for example, is often used to increase the hardness of the crayon and improve its ability to adhere smoothly to paper, while carnauba wax can raise the melting point and give the crayons a subtle shine. Fillers like kaolin and clay are also sometimes included in the mix. These fillers alter the crayon's opacity and texture, making it possible to create everything from bold, solid colors to softer, more translucent shades. Each additive is precisely measured and tested to ensure that the final product strikes the perfect balance of properties, resulting in crayons that are both durable and enjoyable to use. Quality control. In crayon manufacturing, maintaining color consistency is a top priority in crayon quality control. To avoid any variations, precise color formulas are strictly followed during the pigment mixing process for each specific hue. While consistent color is crucial, other factors are equally scrutinized. The physical properties of crayons are rigorously tested to ensure they are durable enough to withstand regular use, yet soft enough to glide smoothly across paper, leaving bright, even marks. Crayons must also retain their shape and performance across a wide range of temperatures. Safety is of the utmost importance, especially since crayons are primarily used by children. Each batch is carefully tested to ensure they are free from toxins or allergens. The wrappers are also examined to confirm they contain no harmful substances. Additionally, the printing on the labels is checked for clarity and accuracy, as even a minor mistake, like a misspelled color name or a misaligned label, can detract from the overall quality of the product. Crayon Manufacturing Challenges Climate considerations influence crayon formulation. Crayons designed for tropical markets might have a slightly higher melting point to resist the heat, while those intended for colder regions may be made slightly softer to ensure smooth application in chilly classrooms. The global crayon industry is also affected by broader economic trends. Since paraffin wax, a key component, is derived from petroleum, fluctuations in oil prices can significantly impact production costs. This economic pressure has prompted many manufacturers to explore alternative waxes, such as soy or beeswax, which offer both environmental benefits and potential cost stability. Additionally, international trade agreements and tariffs play a significant role in the industry. Crayon manufacturers must carefully navigate these regulations when shipping products across borders. To mitigate these challenges, some companies have established regional production facilities, allowing them to serve specific markets more efficiently and with fewer logistical hurdles. Major manufacturers of crayon, Crayola, Crayola LLC, originally known as the Binney & Smith Company, is an American manufacturer renowned for its art supplies, with crayons being its most iconic product. The company is headquartered in Forks Township, Pennsylvania, within the Lehigh Valley region. Since 1984, Crayola has been a subsidiary of Hallmark Cards. Crayola began its journey producing industrial pigments, but soon shifted its focus to creating art supplies for schools and homes, initially offering chalk and later expanding to crayons. Over time, their product line has grown to include colored pencils, markers, paints, modeling clay, and more. Crayola products are designed to be safe and non-toxic, with most of their crayons produced in the United States. In addition to their popular children's products, Crayola also manufactures Silly Putty and a range of professional art supplies under the Portfolio Series brand, which includes acrylics, watercolors, tempera paints, and brushes. Crayola claims that its brand is recognized by 99% of U.S. households, and its products are available in over 80 countries worldwide. The Binney & Smith Company was established in New York City in 1885 by cousins Edwin Binney and Charles Smith. Initially, the company focused on producing industrial colorants, such as red iron oxide for barn paint and carbon black chemicals that enhance the durability and color of tires. In 1900, 
their innovative approach to creating affordable black colorants earned them a gold medal at the Paris Exposition. That same year, they ventured into educational supplies by producing slate school pencils. Edwin Binney's experimentation with industrial materials led to the creation of the first dustless white chalk, which won another gold medal at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Originally formed as a partnership, Binney and Smith became a corporation in 1902. That year, they developed the Stayonal Marking Crayon. On June 10, 1903, Edwin Binney and his wife, Alice Stead Binney, introduced a new line of wax crayons under the brand name Crayola. In 1903, the company also launched the Rubens Crayola line, specifically targeted at artists and designed to compete with Europe's Raphael brand of crayons. The Rubens Crayola offerings varied in price, with the number six Rubens box, containing six colors, selling for five cents, while the number 500 Rubens Special Artists and Designers Crayon Box, featuring 24 larger crayons in a range of colors, was priced at $1.5. Dixon Ticonderoga. The Dixon Ticonderoga Company, headquartered in Heathrow, Florida, is a well-known American manufacturer of office and art supplies. Now a subsidiary of the Italian firm FILA Spie, the company is best recognized for its iconic product, the Ticonderoga Pencil a yellow number no. 2 HB pencil adorned with a distinctive green and yellow metal band. In addition to the Ticonderoga pencil, the company also offers other brands, including Dixon and Oriel pencils, Dixon Industrial Products, and Prang, Lyra, and Packin School in art supplies. The Dixon Ticonderoga Company was formed through the merger of two historic firms, the Joseph Dixon Crucible Company of New Jersey and the Bryn Mawr Corporation of Pennsylvania, both established in 1795. Joseph Dixon, along with his son, was instrumental in founding the company. Dixon later expanded its reach by acquiring the 200-year-old German company Lyra. The name Ticonderoga is derived from graphite ore discovered on Lead Hill in 1815, which was subsequently processed in Ticonderoga, New York. In 2002, Dixon Ticonderoga closed its manufacturing facility in Sandusky, Ohio, relocating production to Mexico. This transition was followed by the acquisition of the company by FILA in 2005, which led to the closure of its main U.S. factory in Versailles, Missouri. Despite these changes, the company continues to operate a distribution center in Georgia, where a limited number of pencils are produced to maintain its designation as a domestic manufacturer. The company's headquarters remain in Heathrow, Florida. Interestingly, Lee Corso, a consultant and former director of business development for Dixon Ticonderoga, is more widely recognized as a sports broadcaster on ESPN. Known for waving a pencil during his on-air segments, Corso has become a distinctive presence in sports media, as noted by USA Today. Stadler. Stadler SE is a German multinational company based in Nuremberg that specializes in making stationary products. Founded in 1835 by J.S. Stadler, the company produces a wide range of items, including writing tools, technical drawing instruments, art supplies, and office products. Stedler is known as the largest European manufacturer of wood-cased pencils, overhead projector pens, mechanical pencils, leads, erasers, and modeling clays. The company operates over 26 subsidiaries worldwide and has nine manufacturing facilities, with nearly two-thirds of its production happening at four factories in Nuremberg, Germany. Some of its products are also made in Japan. Stedler's Norris pencils are particularly popular in British schools. The Steidler brand traces its origins back to the 17th century, when Friedrich Steidler took over the entire pencil-making process, from crafting the lead to shaping the wood. However, this practice was initially prohibited by the Council of Nuremberg. Friedrich Steidler's work eventually led to the lifting of this restriction, paving the way for other pencil makers in Nuremberg. The company itself was officially founded by Johann Sebastian Stadler in 1835 as a pencil factory in Nuremberg. However, the roots of the company stretch back to 1662, when Friedrich Stadler was recognized as a pencil-making craftsman in the city's records. Johann Sebastian Stadler later received permission to produce black lead, red chalk, and pastel pencils in his factory. By 1866, the company had grown to 54 employees, producing 2 million, 160,000 pencils annually. In 1962, Stadler began producing technical pens, and in 1967, the company established a subsidiary in Milan, Italy. During the 1970s, Stadler acquired the Neumarkt factory, formerly the Eberhard Faber factory. In 2010, Stadler expanded its product range to include brands like FIMO, Modeling Clay, 
Mali, and Aquasoft, all under the Stadler name. Stadler's product lineup includes several well-known items, such as Norris and Mars Lumograph pencils, Mars plastic erasers, 925 series mechanical pencils, Mars micro pencil leads, tripless fine liners, tech surfer highlighters, and LumaColor markers and colored pencils. Sakura Color Products Corporation. The company began as a crayon manufacturer in 1921. By 1924, Sakura had invented the first ever oil pastel, combining oil and pigment, and patented it globally under the Craypaws trademark. In 1982, the company introduced its well-known Pigma marker pens, and in 1984, Sakura invented the first gel-based ink, which became a staple in its new line of ballpoint pens. Today, gel ink pens are produced by many stationery companies. In 1991, Sakura acquired the Dutch company Royal Talons, the North American division. Sakura Color Products of America, Inc. was established in Hayward, California in 1986. Sakura further expanded in Asia by establishing Shanghai Sakura International Trading Co. Lighty in Shanghai, China in 2002. Sakura Color Products Corporation, Kabushiki Geisha Sakura Kuripasu, is a Japanese company headquartered in Osaka's Chuoku district. It produces a wide range of stationery and art materials, but is best known for its Pigma marker pens. True Color Stationery Co. Lounded. Established in 1991, Guangdong True Color Stationery Co. LLTD is one of China's largest stationery manufacturers. The company operates three production bases in Guangdong, Shanghai, and Jiangsu, and has three R&D centers located in Switzerland, Korea, and Shanghai. True Color offers a wide range of products, including writing instruments, art and painting materials, and school and office supplies. True Color is recognized as the leading producer of gel pens and oil pastels in China. The True Color brand has become well known, setting trends in China's gel pen industry and securing a strong position in the domestic market for art and painting materials. In 2005, True Color's ball pens and gel ink pens were honored as state inspection exemption products, and its art and painting materials were awarded the famous brand products of Shanghai. Additionally, the China Artists Association and the Children Art Committee have appointed True Colors art materials as official painting guidance tools. The True Color brand has also been named one of China's top 10 stationary brands. Rose Art Industries. La Rose Industries, LLC, is an American company specializing in toys, arts and crafts, and stationery, headquartered in Randolph, New Jersey. The company primarily sells products under the brands Crazy Art, Rose Art, and USA Gold. La Rose Industries was founded in 2008 by Lawrence Rosen, whose grandfather, Isidore Rosen, originally founded the Rose Art Company in 1923. After Lawrence, along with his father and brother Jeffrey Rosen, sold Rose Art to Mega Brands in 2005, Lawrence started La Rose Industries with Crazy Art as the main brand. Mega Brands was later acquired by Mattel in 2014. The original company was founded by Isidore Rosen in 1923 as the Rosebud Art Company in New York City. In the 1970s, it was renamed Rose Art, accusing company executives of insider trading in 2005 and 2006. Mega Brands countersued, and in November 2009, both parties settled. The Rosens agreed to repay $17.2 million and dropped claims to an additional $54.8 million. In early 2021, La Rose Industries announced that it had purchased the Rose Art brand from Mattel, bringing the brand back under the Rosen family's ownership. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.